Well, um, welcome everyone again to uh, this language alchemy workshop. And um, all of you know me, right? Is the person who coming in also know me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. So my name is Alejandra Siroca. All I'm going to say is I founded Language Alchemy. Language Alchemy is uh, three things, an awareness practice, it is a conscious communication approach, and welcome, welcome, and it is also a form of evolutionary activism. And some of you have been here since the beginning when we started in September. And so I would like to start today a little different than we have in the last four workshops. I would like to start by first sharing with you what we have done thus far. And as I'm mentioning these things, for those of you who have been here and those of you who have been following me for some time and get my newsletters or maybe listen to a podcast, I would love for you to just take a moment, we're going to take an inventory and write a reflection for about three minutes of how you have, something you have learned about your communication, something that was useful that you learned in these four, today is the fifth workshop, in these four workshops, something that caught your attention, something that maybe you put into practice and what the outcome of that was. But sometimes what happens is that we keep learning and we keep adding and adding and adding and keep learning new information. And sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm, I'm constantly on the improvement path, but I don't get to stop, pause and look at how far we have come, how much we have grown how much progress we have made. And that is an important part of the path of transformation to recognize in a very adult uh, and celebratory way that we have made progress, that we have learned something, that we have implemented one more tool, that we have something under in our toolkit that we have used. Because when we do that, then we prepare our system to relax and open up for another tool to come in. So how does it sound to do a little review or can do something different today? And so I want to share with you that what I have taught you so far, and we've talked a lot about this, is how language is one of the most powerful tools we have available with us at all times to relate to ourselves, to life and the world. And that this tool is free. We have this ability because we came to the world with the ability to communicate. However, how we use this tool has been conditioned by the learnings of our earlier environment, especially during the first seven years of life, when we got not only the download of the language, but also how to communicate when we feel angry, grateful, expansive, exuberant, sad, depressed, unsure, doubtful, and vulnerable. And we have also learned how to communicate in a way that sometimes does, doesn't uh, take into account the impact that our communication has on others. But our language is so powerful that it has the impact and the potential to bring great healing as well as to divide us and create divisiveness, something we worked on in the last workshop, or to create togetherness, collaboration, respect, uh, more meaningful relationships. So. In the process of that, we have been looking at some language alchemy principles. So in the, in the first workshop, let me see if I can uh, refresh the recollect our recollection for all of us. So in our first workshop, we talked a lot about the importance of how we think through language, we relate through language, and we create uh, through language. 
And then in our second workshop, we have talked about how the language we speak is the language we have learned. So we looked at what's hard for us to communicate, what's easy for us to communicate. And we all came to the conclusion that what's hard is what we didn't learn. Nobody taught us how to communicate with ease in these circumstances. And what's easy for us to communicate is things that we saw through modeling, through direct teaching, that was part of our environment and society. And so it comes easy. And many times we got rewarded for communicating in certain ways. So for some of us, when we uh, felt sad and our parents minimized our feelings and then they cheered on us for you know, getting over it quickly, we have not learned how to communicate when we're sad and feel vulnerable. But we find it very easy to communicate when we feel strong and good and happy and got over, you know, overcame some, some difficulty. It's very easy. For some of us, it's very easy to communicate feelings because when we were children, we were rewarded for communicating feelings. But for some of us, it's very hard to communicate feelings because we were not allowed to communicate feelings or certain feelings as children. So that was the, the, what we worked on in our second workshop. In our third workshop, we talked about how um, wh when we grow up, our communication needs to follow suit. So when we have learned how to communicate in particular ways, and then in present life as adults, we come up against some situations that our mind considers they're exactly how I experienced them when I was three, five, seven. We communicate in habitual ways and that our communication needs to grow up and it needs to catch up with the adults that we are. So we worked on that in our third workshop and looking at in what ways do we need to stretch our ability to communicate so that we can show up in the world as the adults, the conscious, mature, creative, loving, capable, caring adults that we are. And so we looked at three things. We looked at our intention. If we want to communicate as adults, and instead of communicating habitually, we looked at three things which we called airy. And I don't know if you remember, I had three three pieces of paper that I said, our communication, sometimes it's like air, the air we breathe, we're not aware of it. But when we bring A, awareness, how am I communicating? I, intentionality, what do I want to communicate? Why do I want to communicate this way? And um, then we bring the R, responsibility, the way I'm communicating has an impact on the other and has an impact in our relationship. Now we can bring our communication up and we can grow up in our communication so that it catches up with, with us. So we have awareness, we have intention, and we have responsibility. And those three are the pillars of communicating like an adult. And of course, in 2025, we're going to talk about, well, what happens when, even though we had beautiful intentions, we hurt, we, our, our, you know, our communication uh, was hurtful to someone, was not skillful, was not respectful, was not in alignment with the values, and it was more in alignment with our communication habits. Well, we're going to learn to repair, because that's part of our responsibility of being an adult. And that, that's coming up in 2025, which is one of the most beautiful practices we can learn to repair. We have also talked about wherever our adults, there's going to be conflict. Conflict is inevitable. However, we can look at conflict as an opportunity to split and make the other bad and make myself good or make myself small, make the other big, make the other dangerous and scary and make myself a victim and doubtful and how that impacts our communication. Or we can see conflict as the potential to open to another human being 
and find out what's important for them and what's important for us. And in 2025, we're going to work a lot on how to show up in conflicts consciously with the intention to connect with the awareness of how we're communicating in conflict and with the responsibility of the impact we want to have in conflict. That's, I'm just telling you what's coming up in 2025. But we have also in our last workshop, we did a whole room role play and hopefully for people on Zoom, we figured out that we can make the camera, like the room, uh, what we zoomed, what did we do? We zoomed the camera, we zoomed out. We zoomed out so that you can see the people who are here more. So if we do role plays, you're able to see us all and not, not just me. I'm not the main attraction, we are. We are co-creating this together. And, um, and so we have worked on what happens when in our communication, we label someone. And we had this role play where we were all wearing uh, labels. Do you remember that? And we tried to come up with a conversation which was impossible to have because all we did was to see each other through the labels that we were carrying. And we did a funny and painful role play which shows that this is how we tend to communicate. And so what we did, and I'm going to show you this, this graphic again. Um, it's 88, 20, 20, 80, in case that's, that's uh, okay. I don't understand. So, uh, and also for people on Zoom, which I, I made this graphic. We can't hear you. All right. Thank you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, thank you very much. DA 2288. Okay, now. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, um, well, that can be changed. All right. So, we have we looked at how language influences us. So, we've talked about how we have an experience with someone, could be any kind of experience. Someone said hello to us this morning. And from that experience, we have in our internal communication system, our body gives us a signal. Something happens inside. But whatever happens inside is something that we used to be very much in contact with when we were babies, when we were young. And with our conditioning, we have lost that connection. Hi, welcome. Please come on in. You're at the perfect time. So come and sit here in the, in the front. Thank you. Um, so we have an experience. Someone said, sorry. And then we have a signal. Our body gives us some kind of signal that as adults, we have disconnected from. We rarely listen to the signal. We can call that signal our felt sense. We can call that signal our inten internal communication system. We have disconnected from that. In fact, when I work with coaching clients in individual sessions or with couple sessions and I ask them, so how was it in your body? And the response I get is like, I have no idea. What do you mean? In, in my body, like, huh? my, my body? Like, what does that have to do with communication? And that, it, a lot, but we have disconnected from that. And so this happens very quickly. This signal sends a message to our nervous system, which then, after our seven years of age, when we start to think through language, up until seven, we don't think through language, but after seven, we start to think through language, then we hear something in our internal dialogue. And what I hear may be, oh, she doesn't like me. Oh, um, or oh, she likes me a lot. Oh, that person's nice. Oh, that person is scary. Oh, I, I'm afraid right now and I don't know what to do when uh, I feel afraid. Oh, right now this is awkward and I've never learned how to be in awkward situations. So what we do is that then we start to view our experience, our reality, 
through that lens of that language that we have in our head. All that happened was someone said hello to us. That's the experience. But now we have a whole story here of, of what really happened. And so now we take action. This is when we communicate. So we can communicate by smiling, body language, by taking distance, by frowning, by hiding, by going to say hello to someone else, by looking down, by um, you know, dropping things. We can communicate in so many different ways. Our body language, every behavior is communication. Every action is communication. So when we're looking at language alchemy and you hear me say the word communication, I'm not just referring to the words that we say out loud. And then what happens is that because, you know, this person, whatever, if I hide, I don't say hello. If I, um, if I think the other person likes me, I smile. Then our experience of reality gets validated by our actions. And so then we start this again. We have experience. Then we have a signal. The signal sends an internal language, a story in our heads. That's how we view the situation, others, ourselves, life. We communicate in reaction to how we view things. And then we say, oh, this is what reality is. This is what this relationship is like. This is what that person is like. Last workshop, a month ago, we worked with this third step, the internal language. And what happens when we judge others, whether it's positive or negative. We worked with all those labels that we give others and how what we showed through the exercise we did last month was that when we consider someone X, we see that person through X, we communicate that person through that filter, and we validate and we're not able to see them for the fullness and the beauty that that person is. We're not open to that. Today, we are going to focus on this aspect, on the signal. Because as I said, this is something we have all disconnected from. And we need to, if we're going to be accurate in our interpretation of reality, we need to first connect to what's happening inside before the language comes. So. You have this. I'm going to, I talked a lot. I'm going to give you now a few just minutes. Maybe um, let's take um, two, three minutes. And I'd love for you to write something that you have learned to communicate this year, or even something that you just heard today that you can look at this year and you can say, hmm, I, um, I've learned this or I did this, or I was able to show up in this particular way. I was able to notice this. I had this intention and that really manifested in my communication, in my interaction with another person. Or I took responsibility for hurting other, even though that was not my intention. Or I showed up in alignment with my values. I had this intention and I showed up in alignment with them. Or I was aware after the fact that, ah, oh, yeah, I was judging that person a lot and so I didn't give them a chance. It's so good to do this reflection of what were we able to do? What did we encounter in these particular interactions? So any questions about what we're gonna do? Three minutes reflection? Writing? No? Okay, so let's do it. I'm gonna set my timer. And you're not gonna share out loud what you wrote. This is just for you.
Okay, we have about 30 seconds. Just write your last thought. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is now read what you wrote just to yourself. And then when you're done, close your eyes. So just read what you wrote. Take it in. This is a form of listening to yourself. And now take a moment and close your eyes after reading what you wrote and go within. And notice your experience in your body. After reading what you wrote, what are you experiencing right now in your body? Listen. Receive. Maybe it's a global experience in your body. Maybe there's tension, maybe there's expansion, maybe energy is flowing slowly, quickly, maybe there's stuckness, maybe there's lightness, heaviness, sensation of cold or heat or warm, prickly, pulling, Maybe that sensation that you're noticing right now is localized somewhere in your body. Bring your awareness to it. Listen. Receive it. Notice if what you're experiencing is pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. And keep listening to your body communicating with you. Very gently open your eyes. And I'm going to pass around a sheet that I have for all of you. So Kristen, can I give this to you? Thank you. And um, yeah, I can just take one and pass the rest. So in this sheet, what I'm going to ask you to write is since body sensations you noticed right now, on the first column, so there are one, two, three, four, five columns. On the first column, so write down, maybe it was global or maybe you noticed it in some part of your body. That's why it says location. In the second column, write the description of what you noticed. And then just put a check mark. Was it pleasant, unpleasant, neutral? Uh, yes, you can take one, two rows. Yes, if you notice more things. Absolutely. 
we have many rows there for a reason <laughs> today. <laughs> yes. Yes, there are pins right there. And you can also take a, a clipboard and all kinds of goodies there. Okay, so uh, was it pleasant, unpleasant, neutral? No? Unpleasant? Mm -hmm. Both, okay. Who had three? Pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. Who had pleasant? Uh, yeah, right, because you had, and, and Dana too. Mm -hmm. And uh, were you surprised by what you noticed? Were you all, yeah, a little bit? Mm -hmm. Were you able to notice anything? Is anybody here not able to notice anything? Like nothing. Okay, so you all notice something. That's great. Okay, so we're going to do something. This is the, the preliminary for what we're going to keep doing today and working with this signal that our body gives us. I usually like to start by saying our names and welcoming each other in the space and doing what I call setting the conditions for success, for the opportunity to be open and learn something different. And um, so I, um, I'm going to actually go this way today. And uh, no, actually, let's go this way. When we get to Jeff, Jeff, you're going to communicate with people online. And then and then we'll continue with people here in the room. So the way we do it is that Kristen would say um, your name, you say your name and the pronouns you go by, and then I am going to greet you by saying welcome, saying your name, and then, um, and then Brandon, you're gonna do the same. Kristen, you welcome him, and we go like that, okay? So just say your name. Oh, uh, wait, wait, and we need mics. And is this on? Yes. Uh, I'm Kristen, she, her pronouns. Hi, Kristen. I'm happy you're here. You are welcome here. Your presence and your voice matters. I'm Brendan, I'm a girl by he and him pronouns. So take the mic. <laughs> Hi, Brendan. Welcome. Your presence and voice matters. I'm Terry. I go by she, her pronouns. Welcome, Terry. Your voice and your presence are welcome here. Cute. Noam. Uh, I'm Noam, and I use he and they pronouns. Welcome, Noam. Your voice and your presence are matter here. Hi, I'm Jeff. I go by he, him pronouns. Sorry. Welcome, Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Your presence and voice matter. OK, so unmute yourself uh, on Zoom. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dana. I go by she, her pronouns. Hi, Dana. Welcome. Your voice um, matter. And, and your presence matters. Your presence, your presence and voice matter. Sorry. Okay, then we have Tia. My name is Tia and she or they are fine pronouns for me. 
Hi, Tia. Your voice and presence matter here. Thank you. What are we going on in the room? Yeah. Hi, my name is Lana. Hi, Lana. You're welcome. Your voice and presence are welcome here. My name's Jimmy. I go by he, him. Hello, Jimmy. Uh, your voice and presence matter here. Hi, uh, my name is Britt, and he, they pronouns. Hey, Britt. Your voice and presence matter here. Hi, I'm Alejandra. Um, the pr pronouns I go by are she, her, ella. Hi, Alejandra. Your voice and presence matter here. Thank you. Let's close our eyes. and go within and notice what are you experiencing right now in your body. Notice if it is a global experience in your body or if it is a localized experience. Welcome the experience, receive the experience. Listen to the experience. What's here inside? Maybe there's a sense of relaxation or a tightness. Maybe there's a bubbliness or a numbness, a lightness heaviness, a color. Maybe there's some part of your body giving you a specific signal. Welcome, receive it, listen to it. Now gently open your eyes, take the worksheet and write down what you noticed, what you listened to, what you received. Was it localized? Was it a global experiencing? What was that felt sense like? Describe it. Was it neutral, pleasant, unpleasant? Write it down. And even if nothing came up, write nothing. So write it down. So questions for you, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral this time? Brandon, you're nodding. Yeah, all, those. all of those. Mm -hmm. Before it was just one, now there are more. Now they were all bad, now they're all of them. A mix, okay. You, Jeff, you're... Okay, pretty neutral, more positive. 
about you, Lana? From unpleasant to neutral. Okay. Uh, how about um, Dana? What did anything you noticed? Yes, there's a, a pleasant sensation of um, more of a flowing energy, kind of a, mm -hmm. a enlivening. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, an enlivening. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Anybody got surprised by what they, by the sensations? Anything was surprising? Yeah. Yeah? For you, Jimmy, you were a little surprised? Mm hmm What, do you want to share what was surprising? Uh, I'll, I'll give you the mic so that, yeah. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised because with, most of these kinds of exercise, I'm always relieved at the end of them that they went well, they uh -huh. went okay, and that mm -hmm. everybody did what they were supposed to do, <laughs> and that the technology all worked okay. <laughs> and um, and I'm always a little bit surprised by that. that mm. Why am I so concerned? Yeah. And and in at, in this case, I noticed that by the end of it, my eyebrows were net. Were, were knitted my you know my forehead was a little bit and my shoulders were a little bit clenched and then it relieved mm. and i was like okay that, mm. that's pleasant that that yes that it's pleasant that it's over and that it went well and now i'm relieved yes you're relieved and you noticed how your body was telling you i am relieved yes. okay beautiful so we're going to do our other part that is extremely important of setting these conditions for success and we're weaving, see, we're weaving the topic of today with the rest of what we're doing today, uh, which is the preliminary part is so important to set the conditions for success in interactions in human connection. And part of that is looking at our cult multicultural communication values. So what I'm going to do, I usually explain them and say a few things about them. This time, I'm just going to mention them. And I'm going to ask you both online and in the room to take notice of at least one of them. And when you take notice of one of them, you are going to pick it up, show it to the camera and pick up the, the microphone and either say what I wonder about this value is, or you can say this value is calling my attention because, or I appreciate this value because. So I'm going to repeat these prompts, but for the time being, as I just read these values out loud, just notice one of them that calls your attention, that you appreciate, or that you wonder about, okay? So these values for multicultural conscious communication are confidentiality, openness and curiosity, listening with presence, tolerance and respect, authenticity, compassionate understanding, Willingness to explore discomfort. Humility and maturity that the intention and the impact can be different. Authority of your experience. Equality. Diversity in our communication styles. Bravery to say what's uncomfortable belonging and warmth, trust and transparency. So the mic is here, or you can unmute yourselves and in popcorn style, pick one of them and either say, what I wonder about this value is, or this value is calling my attention right now because, or, I appreciate this value because so let's just uh, let's just start who would like to start great thank you Lana so pick the mic pick up the mic and pick up uh, the mic is right here yes 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Can I take yours? Yes, which one do you want to? I want to take this one. Mm -hmm. This value is calling my attention because. Mm -hmm. Calling my attention, yeah, because, and I look it for authenticity. Because yeah. I'm looking for authenticity. You're looking for yeah. authenticity. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, My in own. your life or your own. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when you think of authenticity, what do you think about? What is authenticity for you? Uh, I think it's pretty, it's like, it's about, uh, I'm so sorry for standing. It's beautiful like, that you're standing. Like, we like want this. you to Can stand. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see everyone. So authenticity is uh, like coming back home, like being yourself, I think, for me. Yeah. But English is not my strong part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe I understand. What, what language is English for you? Second, third, fourth, yeah, second. fifth? Yeah, maybe, second? Maybe third. Yeah. Third language. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is you want to be authentic in your expression yeah. in English or in all languages? In all languages. In, in all, all languages. my life. In all your life. Yes, yes. Don't worry about the other side. That was a oh, mistake when I printed that out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, beautiful. And you know, the word authenticity has the same etymological root as the word author. Oh. So to be authentic in your communication is that you are the author of your communication. That's amazing. Thank so you. notice what ha did everybody notice what happened in Lana's body? I, did you yes. notice it? <laughs> yeah. What did you know? What did your body give you as a signal? Yeah, like uh, I I felt that I want to catch a breath. Yeah, to, to catch a breath. Yeah, to fill my lungs with air and like make this with my shoulders yeah to broaden your shoulders yeah. and really receive the air and you know when we do that which is to inhale in other words to inspire life comes in we're receiving life in so this authenticity is also for you an expression of receiving that life that is yours thank you yeah you're welcome Okay, who's next? Or you can actually, Lana, you can give the mic to whoever's okay. next. Let's go. <laughs> Ooh, la, la. See, Lana's being authentic. Let's go. <laughs> well, for me, it was, it was also, also authenticity. Mm -hmm. and, um, and do you want to... It it, was, the, the value is calling my attention. And I, appre and I appreciate yeah. the value. Um, I once had a, 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 a boss who, when I was in having conflict with him and having- Can people hear him because his mic is all the way? Yeah, okay, they can hear you. I had, okay. a, I had a, a, a boss with whom I was in conflict and, and we were discussing uh, the need for me to get some more money to have my pay raise. And he said, well, well, when it comes to um, uh, motivation in your job or motivation for you in general, what are you motivated by besides money? And I said, authenticity. I, I need things to be real and to, for the people around me in the situation to be authentic. And that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and did you get a race? <laughs> no, I, I, you did I, not I, did, get... I did get, no, I did not get fired. I did, I did get the raise, uh -huh. but I had to do some convincing. Uh -huh. about yeah, it. so you had to actually elicit some openness and curiosity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now Jimmy, give the mic to somebody else. Thank you. So we have three prompts. The value is, this value is calling my attention because, or what I wonder about this value is, or I appreciate this value because. 
Um, so what I wonder about this value of willingness to it explore discomfort is how long do I have to sit with it? <laughs> um, because I would like not to for very long. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what I would say is that now that you are an adult, you have much more capacity to explore discomfort and that when we explore discomfort, it, it's actually quick. But what's more important is the, uh, the willingness to do it. Quick in the sense of um, it doesn't last more than maybe even 10 minutes. That's forever. That's forever. Yeah, everything is relative. 10 seconds is too long. <laughs> 10 seconds is too long. Yeah. Yes, and when we don't have the uh, openness to explore discomfort, then things stay the way they are and that is you know we can say what's on the other side of exploring the discomfort is that we can really get into touch with our capacity but also with the ability to make changes that are more in alignment with the vision that we have for ourselves our relationships our world so comments questions objections it's, oh, welcome. No, it's actually something that um, it's it's just an interesting thing because I actually do. I have always thought that I'm oh no, I'm, I'm good at dealing with these things and I can sit with these things. And it's only realized recently that I've started to realize oh no, <laughs> these little pockets where I'm like nope, <laughs> you know, really good at yeah and weaving. So. Yes, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Britt, you're next. Funny. I also um, see. So him. the value that call, is calling my attention because, or I appreciate this value because, or what I wonder about this value is. Uh, I appreciate this value because uh, willingness to explore discomfort is kind of why I'm here. Okay, so pick it up again. So willingness to explore discomfort. Yep. yep. And it's kind of why you're here. Yeah, I don't usually like participating in groups. So this is a exploration of discomfort. Yes, beautiful. It's an exp exploration of discomfort that also leads to something you're standing on. <laughs> Want to say it out loud because people on, on Zoom can't see it? Bravery. Bravery. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Britt. OK, so pass the mic. Jeff. Right, so I'm going for yeah, well, okay. It was, yes, it was, there's two of them. Uh, this is calling my attention because I appreciate, I appreciate it. This value and what I wonder about this. No, yes, not what I wonder. Yeah, you don't wonder. Okay. The other two, yeah. <laughs> Listening with presence is is I think my hardest challenge in life. I can get emotion. I can get lost in emotion. Mm. So yeah, so. So I, I, I value being able to figure this piece of my personality out or my communication ability. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, it's also related to bravery and, um, and what I would say is also having authority of your own experience, that this is what happens, the feelingfulness comes. And what we're going to do today, Jeff, of really listening to the signal, the felt sense, which comes before the feeling is going to give you a lot of information so that you don't get lost in the emotionality of things. So thank you. Okay. Who's left? Let's see. Brandon. Right, I'm left. Um, Brent, uh, do I have to, oh, I'm just me. And then uh, I am curious, or I'm, wonder i think i wonder or i yeah, appreciate wonder. the uh the wording of authority of your own experience it's funny and um and it's a good phrase and uh yeah i don't know i just like it okay thank you I and i mean whoever came up with this this is yeah that makes me happy okay beautiful it's 
you know, it, it is this idea that nobody can be an authority of your experience. So sometimes what we do in communication is that we minimize the experience of the other person. We deny it. We say, it's not that bad. You're not having that experience, you know, or it's not that great. Or have you thought about this? You know, I remember one time since Thanksgiving happened um, in our family, we do lots of games and someone in the family was playing a game and was winning. And their mom said, um, stop celebrating, honey, you haven't won yet. You know, don't celebrate or, or if you want to keep celebrating, quit while you're ahead. And I just felt like, oh, but this young girl is really having the authority of her experience. And there's the, no, I'm the authority of your experience. So this is something very, and a very important value when we're communicating, to learn to not minimize things in ourselves or others, to not tell others, no, this is what you are experiencing, because the only authors of their experience is the person who's experiencing them. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to argue. No, you're having a different experience yeah. from over here. But yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just, it works. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like it. Uh, okay. Yeah. What's that? No one will not forget. Yes. Um, I think I'm going to go with bravery. Bravery. Yeah. And, I, you know, I could have chosen a bunch, mostly the ones that have already been mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. Authenticity, willingness to explore discomfort, are the other two that I would have chosen. Uh, but for me right now, bravery is like... Um, it, it's interesting. It's it's like uh, I have to be brave to explore my discomfort and to be authentic. But as I'm working with it, which I've been doing for a few years now, it's like it's actually it doesn't take that much bravery. It's yeah, just, just a little bit of bravery, mm -hmm. and then it's so uh, self. Uh, full, it's self perpetuating because then it feels so much better to have acted authentically to have explored my discomfort that it's um, yeah and it's not like this like ah, bravery you know it's just mm -hmm. this very little bit of like okay I'm feeling a little uh, but let me just do this anyway and yeah. it's like oh that wasn't so bad beautiful so that, yeah that's, thank uh, you what I'm working on thank you thank you should I finish in the room? Yeah, we can finish in the room and then go on online or? Thanks. Uh, so I'm going to pick one that no one's picked yet. OK. And I'm going to do the I wonder about. I wonder about. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the trust and transparency. So mm -hmm. I tend to be a person that is very reluctant to be vulnerable and be open. Mm -hmm. And so what I wonder is, how in the world, in a room full of strangers, can you have trust and transparency? <laughs> yes, that's so beautiful. That's such a great question. So first of all, um, let me ask you, uh, when you were a child, the way you were taught to communicate, was it to be transparent and reveal what was going on with you? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. I grew up in an Asian household. Yes. That's the opposite of what you do. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I think for children, Sure, it's fine for children to express emotion, but you learn that as you grow up, you have to present a certain way. Yes, it's right? about the presentation, yes. which then is not authentic because it's not what's happening inside. Right. However, you got rewarded for that. Yes. And mm -hmm. so it's very hard right now to communicate transparently when the people who were your most most intimately connected with you at a time when you were developing and learning language told you that's not allowed mm -hmm. so for you part of exploring trust and transparency will have to go with the authenticity right i want to be the author of my own communication and not communicate so habitually in ways that just align with my Asian culture, but align with who I want to be today. Yes. And for that, the trust will be a lot of 
um, working with the potential fear and having the bravery to say, actually here, right here, I'm safe. Yeah. We don't have a tsunami warning today. <laughs> <laughs> yet <laughs> we're safe yeah. you know we're in a in a space where everybody's coming here to cultivate these values we're safe you're an adult no one has an intention of um creating anything that could potentially be unsafe yeah and i think intellectually i totally get that yes right but it's actually feeling it because i i do value being honest and authentic yeah but then it's like getting it from here or yeah from Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in 2025, we're going to do a lot of things. And this is mainly what I work with in the in the communication group coaching that will start in February in cultivating um, that confidence and that sense of inner safety mm -hmm. so that our communication can come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautifully. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. I, guess I will virtually pass the mic to Dana. Yes, Dana. Thank you. Mine is, oh, um, I am appreciating uh, trust and transparency as well. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> it was calling to me this morning. It's just very hard to be vulnerable and to mm -hmm. speak honestly about my feelings and sharing that with another. Because I grew up in an environment where it was not um, okay to be vulnerable. You know, you had to be strong and figure it out on your own and um, so just very, very much appreciating, uh, being able to communicate this with all of you right now, you know, it feels, mm. um, very supportive. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And so again, this is to remember you were not taught how to communicate that way when you were young. And that's why we can say it's hard right now to do it. And it's also a possibility to learn it because the second principle of language alchemy is that the communication we speak is something we have learned. So we can learn to communicate differently. We can learn to include more communication tools. We're not a done deal in terms of communication. We still have a lot of possibility and space to learn, just like you can all learn a second, third, fifth language. We can all do it. If we have the tools, the space, the energy, the willingness, and the circumstances, we can, we can do it. We can learn. And we're all co-creating that here. Thank you. Tia, how about you? Hi. Um, uh, the value that's calling my attention uh, is also trust and transparency. I, um, had a, I, I put I put some effort into that my work cultures that I'm a leader and have that value like in the in the processes and what we're doing and I had a meeting on Friday where it was really clear that like we weren't all on the same page about it the people in the meeting mm. I was like yeah oh this feels so uncomfortable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, so it's up for me. <laughs> it's up for you. Yeah, thank you. And you're bringing up, you know, the diversity, diversity of thought, diversity of opinions and diversity of, we can say words like trust, transparency, belonging and warmth. And for different people, they may uh, have different meanings. You know, for someone could be like, I am trust. Thing. I, and I am being uh, transparent, but then for another person, that may mean something different. So uh, with all these values in mind of multicultural communication, trust and transparency, belonging and warmth, bravery, diversity, equality, authority of your experience, humility and maturity, willingness to explore discomfort, compassionate understanding, authenticity, tolerance and respect, listening with presence, openness and curiosity, and confidentiality. Let's close our eyes. And now notice what your experience is internally. 
What are you experiencing right now? Listen to the signals of your body. Receive them. Be aware of whether they're pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Welcome, receive, listen. The signals that may be at a global level or at a localized level. Is there a particular part of your body giving you a specific signal? Dryness, wetness, tingly, something dropping, something energy spreading. pulsating, vibrating, stuck, warm, just notice, listen, receive, And open your eyes and write it down on your worksheet. And so I'm going to ask you again, um, in what you wrote right now, are they the same experiences, the same signals? Did you notice anything different in what you just wrote down? If before you noticed coldness and stuckness, is that what you're noticing now? Is it exactly the same signal that your body's giving you? Are you noticing something different? Different than? Than the first time and the second time that you, you know, as you're filling out this sheet, are these sensations exactly the same? Are they different? Are some of them the same and some are different? Yeah, that's what I see you nodding. How about pleasant, unpleasant, neutral? Neutral? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, I felt very at ease but solid. Uh-huh. At ease but solid. Yeah, very yeah. centered. Yeah. And, but, but so that's trending from neutral. It started off as feeling unpleasant, so it's trending toward neutral, and that's not pleasant, but it's more towards, it's split now between pleasant and neutral. Yeah, yeah, it's split. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm, okay. And uh, is anybody noticing whether their experiences are more localized or more global? Global. Mm -hmm. Local. Okay, it's wonderful to have a variety of experiences. See, you are the author of your own experience. Um, so what we are going to do now is that we're going to do a longer practice to notice really the signals of our body. And we are going to do a, uh, a practice that's over 2,000 years old. And the very same Buddha taught this practice. It's a practice called Vedana. And it is a practice of really listening to 
various parts of the body. So instead of having a, um, a global awareness, we're going to go to different parts of the body to really notice the, the signal and the internal communication that's happening there. And this practice is so important if we want to learn to communicate authentically and have create and maintain conscious relationships with others because our body is constantly communicating with us. We sometimes pay attention when it's big an illness, <laughs> you know, or, uh, you know, we threw our back out or something major. We, um, you know, uh, twisted an ankle, something like that. But it's so important to become more and more aware of the subtle communication that our own internal communication system is giving us at all times, because this is a way when we pay attention to our signals, we can interrupt any distortions of reality. And that's why this is one of the first practices that the Buddha actually taught, and it is a communication practice. So to do this practice, I am going to invite you to get comfortable. So there are blankets. If uh, you want to sit on a cushion on the floor, sit on a cushion on the floor. If you want to keep sitting on a chair, sit on a chair. There are blankets and cushions there. But for you at home, if you want to keep yourself where you are, keep yourself where you are. If you want to be on the floor off camera, that's fine. So just do something that allows your body to be comfortable. So let's take care of our body so that we can really receive the signals and listen to the signals. Okay, so we're, we're just going to wait for Lana to come and if um, what helps you be comfortable is to stretch a little bit, to move your body, so do that, you know, there's, um, there are different ways of meditating and, and it's really beautiful when we can just let our body be limber and relaxed and not have to be so tight and um, constricted as we do this practice. And as we are here, and as we're waiting for Lana to join us, let's take a moment to acknowledge where we are in this beautiful space, both physical space as well as energetic space of the San Francisco Dharma Collective, a grassroots organization that is a Sangha committed to bringing forth compassion, safety, connection, inclusivity, belonging, awakening, and liberation for the benefit of all beings. And in this space we're in, in this physical and energetic space, we are also in, for those of our who are in person, we are in the unceded Ramaytush Olone territory. And so let's acknowledge that part of the history and where we are in this moment. And now let's take a moment to notice our bodies and notice the muscles of our body and relax the muscles of the body. As you relax your muscles, 
you notice that the mind also relaxes. Very gently, kindly, and with openness, let's notice the top of the head. And notice the sensations on the top of your head. Feel, receive, listen to the sensations, the signals on the top of your head. Now bring your awareness to your face. Noticing the sensations on your face. Listening and receiving the sensations. The forehead, eyebrows, eyes, nose, cheeks, upper lip, lower lip, chin and the jaw. Bring your awareness to your ears. Listening, receiving the sensation in your ears. Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, listening. Now bring your awareness to the back of the head and the back of your neck. Listening, receiving the sensations in the back of the neck. And now the front of the neck. The collarbones. Your right shoulder, listening, receiving, upper arm, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, lower right arm, wrist, hand, top of your hand, palm of your hand, Right fingers, noticing, listening, receiving the sensations, the felt sense of your right arm. Now bring your awareness to your left shoulder, noticing, receiving, listening, left upper arm, noticing the felt sense, left lower arm, left wrist, the top of your left hand, the palm of your left hand, left fingers, Welcoming, noticing, receiving the felt sense of the left arm. And now notice the left side of your chest, the center of your chest. the right side of your chest, receiving, listening to the signals, hot, cold, warm, opening, tightening, lightening, heaviness, 
bring your awareness to the lower part of your torso, the front of your body, your belly, your internal organs, listening, receiving, welcoming, slow energies, fast energies, prickling, a tug, a pull, a release. Now bring your awareness to your shoulder blades, the right shoulder blade, the left shoulder blade, listening, receiving, welcoming, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Bring your awareness to your lower back, your mid back and then your lower back, your tailbone, your pelvic floor, genitals, sitting bone, noticing, receiving, listening to the felt sense. Now bring your awareness to your right leg, upper thigh, front and back, listening to the felt sense, your right knee, front and back, receiving the felt sense, your shin and calf, right ankle, noticing, welcoming, listening, the top of the right foot, the bottom of the right foot, the sole of the foot, the right toes, listening, welcoming, receiving. Bring your awareness to your left leg, the upper thigh, the front and back, listening, receiving, welcoming, a rising, a falling, energy moving, noticing the felt sense in the left shin and the left calf, welcoming, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, Noticing the right, the left uh, ankle, the top of the left foot, the sole of the left foot, left toes. Noticing, prickling, tingling, pulsating. Just notice your experience and your felt sense. And now on your own, reverse what we have done by noticing from the left toes, soles and top of the left foot, the left leg, the right leg, the back of the body. Take your time. Reverse noticing each part of the body. It doesn't matter if the order is not exactly like the order we went through. 
just keep noticing if your awareness goes to something else come back to the body listen receive what is the felt sense in that part of the body you're noticing right now sensations arising and passing Bring the sensations to the forefront of your awareness. Is it dryness or wetness? Warm, cold, hot, burning, light, heavy, expansion, contraction, opening, closing, pulling, pushing, tingling, vibrating, shaking, trembling, throbbing, prickling, pulsing, tickling, a blankness, a numbness, a stuckness, a flowing, settling, just notice, receive, listen, Now notice the global sensation in your whole being, the internal communication system. What is it telling you right now? Listen to that felt sense. Receive it. Rising and falling, passing, here, inside, within. so let's take a moment you have a worksheet there write as much as you remember sensations whether they were localized or global pleasant and pleasant neutral And I'm going to ask you again, anything surprising? How was this practice for you? In terms of noticing, 
the signals. Let me give it to you. I've been a very lazy meditator and haven't sat for a while. So there was a sense of comfort in returning to it. Mm -hmm. um, and like not having any kind of aches or pains sitting here, you yeah. know, like sometimes when I'm even just sitting on the couch, like my leg hurts, my back, whatever. But yeah, so just very sense of comfort, except my feet were cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a sense of comfort and coming back to yourself. And this is what we get to experience when we are adept at listening to our internal communication system. It's a keep coming back, keep coming back instead of disconnecting, which then leads us to communicating habitually, keep coming back to you. You don't know what to say, check in with your body before you say anything. Instead of saying, I don't know what to say right now. Just pause, check in with your body, listen, and then see what comes up. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Terry. Jeff. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I haven't done a lot of meditation or sitting in my life, but it's funny because for me, it's like, it's stuff I know when I go exercise and do rock climbing, and I know, it's stuff I hear in pieces but it's interesting to sit and just focus on it yeah. so that it's like, it's not just little messages. It's a more focused message. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can you imagine if you and all of us had been taught to retain and pay attention to ourselves our whole lives? Yeah. We would have a completely different world. We would communicate very differently. We wouldn't even think about authenticity. We would just embody it very naturally, which we can. And it takes effort because we're so disconnected, you know? So thank you. Yeah. Others, how was it for you? Noticing, did you notice, did anybody have like, I noticed so many sensations. Tia? Um, I didn't notice so many sensations. There was mostly two. There was the expansiveness that go, that comes along with kind of embodiment and relaxation. And then there's like either the tension before or kind of recurring, like a checking back in with that body part. Oh, look, you're tense again. Right. So it was either like, yeah. hey, or, ah. and, mm -hmm. uh, um, but the thing that, uh, I wasn't expecting i'll just relax these shoulders again um is the ways that the sounds really kind of keyed into my focus of attention in my body not just on my body mm. but like the embodiment part so when you're saying you know receive and 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 uh the bell and so so there were like words of yours that were like oh yeah that is allowing me i don't know the path in in a way that like my own words to myself haven't been and that mm -hmm. was really interesting to think about that like oh yeah listening to other people is different sound yeah in like the vibration of the sound into my ear is different than the internal dialogue in my head so thank you yes you're welcome and you know having had so many uh, different meditation teachers myself I sometimes in my internal dialogue have the voices of other teachers who are helping me connect to myself so if this was useful uh, take it you know adopt it as part of your internal dialogue there are a lot of practices that we're probably going to do next year that come from nlp from neuro-linguistic programming with working with internal dialogue where sometimes we make them like cartoon characters like opera singers and it's fascinating what happens in the body and how it impacts our communication when we work with um, really um, um, working with the internal dialogue in a very in, in, in a very different way.
Yeah. Beautiful. Anybody else wants to share? Yeah, no. Um, one thing I noticed was that having the, because throughout the workshop, we've paused a few times and noticed. And what I notice is that I need more time, like sitting for however long that was, 10 minutes or so, 10, 15, um, is, there, there was something that I've been kind of trying to process all morning long and that I needed that much time yes. to really clue into what was going on where before it was like, oh yeah, something, I'm agitated, but I didn't mm -hmm. get at what it was until this one. Yes, thank you, because we actually need to be able to cultivate the ability to do it quickly. We need first the practice of staying yeah. for some time. 30 minutes, 20, I think we did like 20 minutes. 20. Yeah. And you know, something very useful that you can all do in this practice called Vedna and um, the, you know, I really want to uh, name uh, one of my teachers, Anuttara Lakshmi Singh, who uses a lot of language about receiving and welcoming and listening rather than just notice and, and, um, you know, and do something with it, but just just be there, you have the space, just let it come in, is that you can do this practice by yourself. So all you do is, it's very, very simple. All you're doing is receiving, welcoming, and noticing pleasant and pleasant. And where is it? So you start with the top of the head, move to the face, the back of the head, shoulders, right side, left arm, the front of the body, back of the body, right leg, left leg, and then you come back, and then you do it again, and then you come back, and then you do it again. And you can spend like an hour doing this. It's fascinating how you get tuned in. It's like, you know, like when you are, uh, well, probably, uh, yeah, when we listen to radio, I'm, I'm listening, I'm thinking like, do you all know what a radio is and you know like changing the frequency of the radio and it's not just like pressing button you know or or just your finger saying siri or whatever um but so when you're tuning into a radio and it's like and then you get a clear signal and then you can hear either the voices or the music and you go like ah, there's a relaxation that happens because you can clearly hear it the same thing happens with our felt sense. When, when we're able to give our, ourselves the space to notice and to listen to our felt sense in time, we'll be able to find that frequency clearly and listen to it clearly, which then will impact how we speak with others. So for example, I know that in the presence of certain people, when I feel a tug in my belly, I already know what that means. I already know that I'm afraid. I know that if I speak in that moment, I know that in that moment I need to listen more and relax my belly and call in my sense of capacity and understand I am safe in this moment and notice that, yeah, and I'm 53 years old, I'm an adult, and then I can speak. It might take 20 seconds. But then my communication is much more conscious, useful, and, um, for, and beneficial for both than if I speak in that moment or if I don't, if I bypass noticing what's happening in my belly center. So noticing that signal can interrupt our distortion in reality, our habitual communication that is not just um, impactful, but it can be bring harm to our lives, to our relationships and to others. It can create more divisiveness. So we're going to do a little practice now in which I'm going to invite you to actually stand up. And um, for those of you 
in Zoom, I'm also going to ask you to stand up and you're going to be on and off camera actually, but you're going to be standing up and working with the sheet that I gave you, the this worksheet of understanding your felt sense. And um, what I'm going to ask you and, you, and people on Zoom are going to be off camera and that's okay. People here, you are not confined to this space, you know, there's space up front, there's space in the back. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to walk around a little bit and at some point, I'm going to ring the bell, stop, close your eyes, notice your experience, write it down, hear the bell, we're gonna walk again. And at some point, I'm going to ask you find someone you're just going to be in their presence. You're not going to say anything. Just notice what your felt sense is. Maybe at some point you go and you stop in front of the camera and you look at the camera. Um, so you're going to be in different spaces. You may notice an object and then really look at it and then close your eyes and notice your internal felt sense. So is it clear what we're going to do? So we're gonna start walking. You can walk anywhere you want in your room with your, with your worksheet. So start walking around. It, if you can't uh, walk right now, it's okay. Just turn around, look around. And now stop. Go within. Notice the felt sense. This time notice some part of your body, a specific part of your body that is communicating a signal to you. Listen to it, receive it. Notice it, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Listen again, receive it again. Write it down. Once you write it down, keep walking. You may choose to walk faster. You may turn around. You may look up at the ceiling. You may look up at the floor. Stop, go within, notice the global experience, the global felt sense, listen, receive, Welcome. Notice the quality of the felt sense. Warm, cold, light, heavy, prickly, slow, speedy. Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Write it down.
Now start walking again or shaking or jumping up and down and maybe go somewhere in the room that you you would not go to like this is usually not you you're looking at something in your personal room where you are or in the space where we are a place where you would normally not go to and once you find it Close your eyes, go within. Notice your felt sense, listen. What are you noticing? What are you experiencing right now? Is it global or is it in a part of your body? localized. Neutral, pleasant, unpleasant, tingling, coming, going, arising, passing, keep listening, Keep receiving. Write it down. And after you do that, after you um, wrote it down, now walk towards someone who is here. And for those at home, you can either walk to wa towards a person or a being or a photograph. I see, for example, that there are lots of photographs behind Dana. So you can, you can walk towards that. So walk towards a person. And as you are there in the presence of that person, first notice them. And then close, or the presence of pictures. Close your eyes. Go within. Listen. Welcome receive notice the felt sense warm cold wet dry opening closing blankness numbness flowing Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Write it down. And then come back to your seat once you wrote it down. Okay, and I would love to hear, the mic is there, I would love to hear how this was for you. Were you able to notice more? Were you able to, did you get distracted? What was it like? 
to notice the felt sense as you were moving. Gnome is like all kinds of expressions. <laughs> Take the mic, Gnome. <laughs> Yeah, it was, there was a lot of each time, like, again, again, in contrast to like earlier in the workshop and when I wrote down kind of the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in the presence of the other person, they were like the sun, they were so warm, like mm. there was so much warmth coming from them to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was remarkable. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People in Zoom or in the room. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, a little bit strange for me and uh, to stay focused on myself so so much. Yeah. And uh, I so I uh, make this external observation of everything, mm -hmm. and I I in one point I have uh, I was having a horrible headache and mm. neck ache so at one, one point i feel it go away oh wow <laughs> yeah and then in the presence of other person i just feel myself noticed and it was pleasant also it was pleasant oh what was it like to feel noticed interesting it was, it was interesting and yeah. pleasant yeah yeah thank you. thank you you know what we're doing here this is having an intimate connection with ourselves. The more intimate we can be with ourselves, the more intimate we can be with others. So all this, just this very simple, very, very simple practice does so much for our relationships, for our communication, for our lives, for our health, for our nervous system, for our world, really. It's very simple practice of noticing the felt sense. I mean, there are lots of books written about it, uh, about the felt sense and the importance of noticing that. And um, what I, anybody else wants to say something I'd like to, um, before we do our last activity. Okay. So our last activity is for you to consider, I'd love for you to consider two interactions that you have had maybe in the last week. One interaction that was lovely. So think about a lovely interaction you had. Even if it was you went and got some coffee and someone greeted you and I don't know, there was holiday music, your favorite coffee shop. It was lovely. That whole interaction was lovely. Or it could be with a person. You know, we've had Thanksgiving holiday last week. Many people were with others. So think about one lovely interaction. Does anybody have one in mind? Yeah? Okay. And now just bring yourself back there to that interaction you can close your eyes or you can keep them open but bring yourself back to that interaction notice that lovely interaction imagine you can bring all your awareness inside the body of the you who experienced that interaction what was the felt sense in that moment? Put your heart inside their heart, your toes inside their toes, your fingers inside their fingers of that you who experienced that lovely interaction. Notice the felt sense. And now, open your ears to hear how you communicated in that lovely interaction. Was authenticity there? Was openness there? Trust? 
belonging, warmth, or compassion, joy, love, friendliness. How did you communicate? So now write down on your sheet. I don't have a space for how you communicate it. So write down the felt sense that you noticed. And then you can write, and I communicated in these ways. So I'm just going to ask one person to share. You don't have to share the interaction, but what was your felt sense and how did you communicate? Just one person. Yes, Lana. I yes. <laughs> Authenticity. Share it. He'll go second. OK. So uh, I was communicating with the gratitude and uh, appreciation. With gratitude and appreciation. And what was the felt sense when you went back and noticed? Oh, it was so nice. And I feel warmest uh, all over my body. Oh, warmth throughout your body. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, in Changi Airport in Singapore and my wife, Terry, is expert at finding good situations. She found that we could get a shower in this lounge. And then I found out I could also get a free massage. <gasps> <laughs> and this very little old sitting Singaporean lady gave me a massage. And it was just my interaction with her was just, she was so gentle, but she had like hands of steel, but, but she was so gentle and affirming. And then after she was like, well, there's free shower. You should go take a shower. <laughs> it just, it just was like sort of life affirming in a, in a very yeah. positive way. It was a little over a week too. Mm. It, was, it was like 10 days ago, but, nice. anyway, but it jumped into my mind about how, and we're totally different places in the world, totally different people, totally yeah. different experiences. And mm -hmm. it was a very nice, simple connection, yes. physical and speaking our both are sort of our broken English. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Now, if I were to do the opposite with you and think about an event in which you felt very triggered and was very unpleasant, then the felt sense would be very different. And then you would notice that the way you communicated was more habitual. This is your homework. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to your felt sense because your felt sense has a direct correlation. If we don't pay attention to it, we are going to communicate more habitually. But when we do pay attention to it, we're giving ourselves and the other person and the relationship a chance to show up as the beautiful, connected, capable, compassionate, caring, loving adults that we are. All right. So how does that sound for homework? Great. I'm giving, getting thanks up. Okay. So here's the thing. Many times in these workshops, I've given you homework, but I have not started by checking. Did you listen to these podcast episodes? Did you do your homework? So 2025, be prepared. January, I'm going to ask you. How did you do? Did you notice that? 
for especially for those of you who keep coming every month and I love seeing you. So do it because I'm going to ask you. And speaking of which, in um, I have uh, four podcast episodes if you're interested in going deeper with what we did here. One of them, uh, I'm going to give you the numbers. The numbers are number 45, uh, which is three tools to uncover hidden biases in your internal dialogue, and it has to do with the felt sense. Episode number, and for those who don't know, it's the Language Alchemy podcast, which you can find on any platform. It's completely free. So um, you can, yeah, you can find it on any platform. And then please leave me a review because then it's not for me, it's to help the algorithm help the podcast be found by more people. So um, podcast 45, podcast number 112, which is called Understanding Your Internal Communication System. Then 113, a simple practice to stay connected to your internal communication system. I think you're really going to enjoy that, Tia. <laughs> um, and 116, how our internal communication system shapes our communication with others. All that we have been talking about, if you want to go deeper, you can, you know. You are adults. You're a choice. You get to choose if you, all of these are about 15 minutes long episodes. You get to choose if you want to listen to them or not. There's no obligation. You choose. And um, thank you that with the bells and everything, <laughs> we're hearing here the bells. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope to see you in the next year. We have workshop set up for every month pretty much it's the second sunday of the month that's how you can think about them right i think it's except for one um so the next one is on i thought i had it here january 12th february 9th march 9th i'm going to give you those three so january 12th is is the next one <clears throat> 